I'm the one who's going to be um, the last speaker, and uh, it's always a task to try and keep your. Well, I have to hold this, I'll be told. Uh, it's always a task to keep your attention at this time. Um, and I'm going to be talking about something relevant, um, I hope, um, and uh, but different at the same time. I'm going to talk about um, the possible creation of a mobile commons in Cyprus um, in the context of uh, uh, a multiplication of the domains and uh, spaces for action. And I think this is linked to um, the creativity and the spirit we have just, we have got a, a taste of in, in, in different ways, uh, perhaps uh, in more, more indirect ways than direct ways. On the 20th of, of April 2003, that was 15 and a half years ago, the checkpoints were opened in Cyprus. This created uh, something of a jubilance and uh, a transformation. Um, I think it was uh, Cornelius Castoriadis who spoke about uh, the intense sense of freedom and lucid drunkenness accompanied with artistic creation. I think we could, um, the sense of what was going on then, 15 and a half years ago, I've been reading some of the stuff that some of us have been writing. Um, well, I've done, yeah. um, in fact, uh, there was a meeting that, uh, be, because we, was, we were also unexpected about uh, the checkpoints opened and having this opportunity to cross. We had gone with, to Prague with Orestes' father, who had organized the meeting at that time. And, and the discussion was, they, was all shocking. It was only a couple of weeks after the checkpoints had opened. But it was this intense feeling of what is going on here. There's something really, really serious happening here. And it's so serious. Because on the first day, because it was so chaotic, we're talking about 200,000 people crossing within a few days, a few hours, queuing up thousands of people. It was so chaotic that they, had, they couldn't check the passports at all. So we crossed over, people were crossing one side to the other, and it was just an amazing, amazing, amazing experience. It was a moment of intense freedom and drunkenness of something is really, really changing. Didn't last very long, but it was great. Um, now, my task here has been talk, to talk about the commons, and the way I understand the commons is to try and link them with um, the idea that struggles and creation go together go together in different ways, much more complicated ways, much more direct and indirect ways than we can imagine. Because they're very much linked to the social imaginaries, the greatest um, uh, desires we have, the greatest fears we have, the greatest concerns we have, and our deeper parts of who we are and how we represent ourselves. Therefore, this idea of creation and creating the commons in different ways, in different aspects, which is reshaping the way we understand and express ourselves is of such fascination, of such inspiration, that it is its own, its own piece of art. It is a creation. It can create all sorts of unexpected things that we are still trying to, to grasp and understand. Um, of course, in, in the creation of the commons, the struggles that shape this, this is riddled with contradictions and immense potentialities, and it's entangled with all sorts of complications and obstacles. Um, all I can do is give you 
but a brief sample of what is going on. It is not meant to be representative. It's not a representative sample because I don't think I can find a, an easy way of dealing with this, especially this time. But it's also not random. So I'm not going to pretend that I have randomly chosen the examples I'm going to give here. Um, I will try to read a couple of things um, about what is being done, what is being seen, um, and which will avoid both the localist danger of thinking that everything is so local and so unique and so different that it cannot be related to anywhere else, to anything else, and the globalist idea that it's about the globe, it's nothing to do with the local, and we're up in the moon and nothing is going on. It's actually both. Locally. Um, and I think that the, the, the kind of examples that we have here, and this is the last 15 years, we must go back and, uh, and try and connect to what we're talking about in Cyprus. We're talking uh, here with a, a very, very strange situation whereby we have what we call uh, a state of exception. In fact, we have uh, what Costas Costandino called the Cypriot states of exception. Many, many states of exception working at the same time, reinforcing each other, challenging each other, conflicting with each other, recreated and opening up. But the Cypriot states of exception is a fascinating one because it is multiplying and expanding and contracting. It's accommodating and will have a comfortable zones, comfort zones. I mean, like uh, if we take the CCMC and where it's located, for instance, or if we take the Home Corporation, or if we take where the UN is located, it is a, a bubble, an uncomfortable bu but a bubble. It's a zone which is comfortable for people of both sides to meet, negotiate, and, and feel the security, which is very, very much welcome in this madness. Yes, we need this a bit of sanity in this madness where, where Cyprus is, is happening now. Uh, I'm from Limassol and I'm a migrant to Nicosia, so I'm only uh, one hour away, but I am a foreigner there. Uh, I feel much more at home here. At the same time, I feel very uncomfortable coming back to Limassol because Limassol is a city where you don't feel that, there's any, that the Cyprus problem exists. It's a very, very uncomfortable comfort to be back in Limassol, someone who is, who is, who is closer there. Um, so there are the four examples I want to give the instances of the creation of commons are the historic and the new movement and when I'm talking about new movements I have put the slide here of the Occupy the Buffer Zone I um, just want to show you a couple of slides of that fascinating moment of freedom for these young people and not so young people involved in this process. They have these wonderful uh, ideas. This is in the buffer zone. If you go there, you won't find any trace of this. But you can, you can find wonderful pictures of this as if it's still happening on the internet. So um, it has become evaporated in, to become a part of the, the artistic world of the internet now. So you can see there the military dictatorship in the north and the south business church dictatorship. And, and that's where the border is, and they call it No Border Street. Now, uh, I remember the name of this place. I mean, those of you who don't want to repeat and, and uh, more about it, about this, they call it Occupy the Buffer Zone because they wouldn't want to call it Occupy Nicosia because Nicosia was already occupied. Yeah, so they called it Occupy the Buffer Zone. They were very kind of clever in that sense. But they did create that, that moment, which is uh, interesting. They, they made, they took this dead zone, as it is known. Negrizoni, uh, or the green line, because the officer draw it originally in green, and they made something out of it. They, they, it was essentially a squat uh, that was that became very lively, very interesting at that time. Now, this is the part of the kind of the new social movement. It's very global, very much connected to inspired and people drew from the global occupied. Uh, Occupy movement, but at the same time it was very, it was quite local because they had they did adapt adapted to the local situation very very creatively. 
and in and in, with with inspiration. If you look at if you look at the different things they did, it was lively, it was fascinating, and then it died. How did it die? Well, let me show you another piece of if I can find it here. Uh, this is the the wall part of Nicosia, uh, the old part of Nicosia as it is. This is a common site in Nicosia. This is what uh, the the commercial aspect look, it looks like any city. Uh, this is what that's the image they put in adverts about what Nicosia is about. It could be any city, but this is Lidra Street. And I come here to the uh, occupy the buffer zone. Uh, which got a lot of international attention, Reuters, Al Jazeera, international coverage. It was originally thought, oh, well, how wonderful these young people are squatting and they have taken over this part of the city. Until the police raid came in, they forcefully evacuated the whole thing. Uh, they played a very interesting game and the whole thing was came to an abrupt end. If you go to this area, you won't find anything reminds you that they were there. So that's a part of a, a kind of a very brief moment of 2011 which has, which is now gone. I show this because I think it's part of the collective memory and it has created, it does create a trade, it does create an opening and there are things that we can learn from that moment as well as from the continuing struggles of the same people who were involved, why they lost what happened, what they gave throughout the way. Uh, one of the things that I think, I'm, I don't have time to elaborate on this, I just want to share with you one thing. It's important to bear in mind that one of the problems these people had was that their refusal to connect to any of the other groups involved, any of the previous struggles, any of the people around, uh, was also contributed to their downfall. I think they would have been destroyed anyway because they were up against the church, they were up against big business, they were up against all the negative forces that are there. In fact, the church has now, which is the owner of this building, uh, has renovated and used it for, for other purposes. So they didn't stand a chance in terms of the, the balance of forces. But in any case, what I want to say is that when we talk about struggles, it's not just one moment, it's not what we do here now. Others have been involved in different struggles before us and others will follow afterwards. I think this is a big common we have to draw from. Sometimes it's difficult to recognize ourselves in, other, in, in the old trade unionism, especially modern uh, young people, <coughs> or old party structures or political forces around us. And I think that's, that's a major problem that we have to deal with. But it is part of the common. It is part of something we have to draw on, we, we have to learn if we want to think of the future, if we want to imagine a brighter future. Now, I say this, that, that this is one of the political process. There's a, a, an initiative that I think is important. I don't have any pictures here, but you can find them on Facebook or uh, on the internet. It's a by communal peace initiative, United Cyprus, which, is, which brings together over 70 organizations. They organize events. Now they, will, they want to do shadow technical committees, uh, of the tech, of the official technical committee, so that they can speak about the issues. They organize events. They organize things. But they are really, really very. Uh, they are not as creative on the internet as they would have liked. They say that they want to do more. I'm just giving you an example of sort of things that are taking place. The second example, the second category that I want to talk about is an important project which is a media project, it's a community media project, and doesn't like, in fact, it, 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 it's, it's Greek-speaking, and is it, it's quite exciting. It's called Lefteria Nagnos. Lefteria Nagnos is a, a media project in Cyprus, which takes on, on a weekly basis, I mean, it's called Second Reading in English, and it's basically an attempt to decode and read what is going on, and give its own interpretation. It's second only to Philadelphia's in terms of its readership, so it's quite big, that's the largest newspaper. It gets 30, even at one point it got 30,000 hits, 
uh, Andre, Andres Panayot, who is involved, is not here, but others are. And the, the interesting thing about it, and I think it's a common, is that in that one, the way it's produced, it's produced anonymously and without nobody signs their articles, because one writes uh, a news item, and others are commenting, and they, they publish it. And the way, the way it's circulating underground, free of charge and without funding. Now, it is truly a common in that sense. And as long as these people have the energies, uh, and the energy to do so, as long as they have the creativity, as long as they draw the sources, this is going to continue. But this has emerged and has become an important counterbalance to the commercialized, um, um, more and more um, um, sponsored approach to the sort of initiatives that we're seeing today. And I think this is a, a fascinating area. It hasn't been studied. I don't know anyone who has done a study of uh, uh, Defteri and Almosi, but I think it should because it's creating something fascinating there. The third example, um, which I, I think which, which is being studied, uh, and uh, we are not connecting it enough, is uh, the, the kinds of development that we can see uh, of connections of people 15 years after the opening of the checkpoints. Now, there's a, a study in the University of Nicosia uh, of Cyprus is doing a, a brilliant study of looking at what, what is known as the contact hypothesis. You must know the contact hypothesis. The idea is that through contact, conflicting groups are, can learn each other for each other and can create a different world. Well, in, back in 15 years ago, there was no contact. Before 2003, there was no contact. There were some individual contacts, you can count them, where there will be, you need a special permission, you need to create conditions to meet each other. Now we have a situation where 25%, between 15 to 30%, actually, it's, it's actually, it actually varies, of the people surveyed consistently, of Greek Cypriots, and between 35 and 40% of Turkish Cypriots say that they have Turkish Cypriots or Greek Cypriot friends. The, the friendship could be, it's left open to them. Do you have any friends? They say, yes, I have a friend. It could be an internet, friend. it could be a Facebook friend. But if you say, I have a friend, well, who am I to say, no, you don't have a friend? Who, who am I as a researcher to, say, to claim such a thing? Now, what does this mean? Now, if, if, you looked at, if you look at this, this is a continuous survey that's been taken. There are studies, there are focus groups, there are groups which are being... So there, is, uh, there are elements of some sort of connection and conviviality taking place uh, of fact, so we, that, that are developing uh, on a personal level outside the official lines, the, the traditional media things. So, so people are using their own uh, social media, alternative media, whatever, to connect with each other. And, and this is not juxtaposed to the offline sort of thing. It's, it's sort of connecting and keeping in touch. And I think this is an area which is creating another common which has not been properly studied. I mean, they are studying it for the purpose of their contact hypothesis. It's quite scientific, quite well. But we could be thinking about how we could study this in a creative way. It needs to be used and it can inspire things that can take place. The, the fourth element, and uh, Nico is here, he has done a, a book, published a book looking at uh, an aspect of this, uh, of the CCMC and uh, my radio, which is study, but also there are a wide media of, of actions and, 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 and uh, activities taking place around the home of cooperation, which is quite big. It's very, very big. They have a lot of sponsorship. They, they do a lot of things inside. They are kind of organized groups. There are unofficial groups taken up that are, that are kind of changed. So, and Outside this, there are all sorts of other contacts taking place that are changing. But we're trying to grasp this very complex social reality, which is full of contradictions. Because, you know, on one side, we are reshaping uh, this, the sphere, the connection of pe between people here, but also those who are against it are also doing the same in different ways. So the opportunities using uh, the, the social media exist also for, for those 
for the big backlash that we're seeing. We're seeing, we're seeing new cyber wars uh, that are being studied, and I think it's important that you see the connections that are taking place. So we, we can say that there are uh, segments of the of, of, of in Cypriot society, and I include here also also in Cypriot society anybody who's living here, migrants, uh, uh, visitors, also people who are staying here. I'm not I'm not confining it to uh, to people who are citizens who have uh, who are using this in a way to create what we call in our study mobile commons. And mobile commons is this notion that through contact, through digitalities, there are transformation taking place through uh, our context of commons. Now, with the, as you know, this debate about the commons, uh, historically it was partly connected to land, to land. It has moved off land. Part of it went a lot of knowledge and online, but also there's something else here. And this is the commons of the struggle the commons of creating opportunities and kinds of solidarities that are, are there in practice and often they are very invisible. I just want to give you one example from our study on migration. There's a lot of, uh, just to very, very briefly to give you uh, a sense of how we study. It's the kind of solidarities that emerge that are often difficult to understand. So for instance, uh, we interviewed an irregular migrant, a regular domestic worker who told us that one example of the kind of solidarity active Filipino uh, domestic workers have. What is this? They say, when we go to the bus stop and the police comes in for a raid, the first one who start running are the people who have their documents in order. So that gives the time. The police chase them, that gives the rest of the time to escape. So, and I said, but what a wonderful kind of piece of resistance and solidarity which has never been discussed at any meeting, an organization or thing. No, they, they had this understanding. Of course, the police, uh, through their surveillance, will eventually catch up and try and arrest everyone rather than start running after a few. But just think of this sort of action. Small actions that require an understanding of this is what we do for each other. I'm just giving you uh, one example of this. So... Um, I think that um, um, we, we must, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sociologist and, uh, and a legal scholar primarily, and I try to kind of read this in, this, in, a, uh, in a way that I'm trying to quantify. I mean, okay, I am, I, it's, it's not a useful way. So artistically, it's very boring to quantify, and it's, it's also categorizing, and we read our Foucault, what it means to categorize people, and we read our Deleuze and all of that. So we, I understand all of that. But at the same time, if we do quantify, it's really, really useful. So when I said 25% of Greek Cypriots have Turkish Cypriot friends, I shove it in the face of the fascist, and I say, yes, a quarter of us. Yes? So it's quite powerful. So quantifying, we could use it for in, in our own way. Um, at the same time, we need to kind of think of the, the kinds of transformations in the nature of what we do, what communities can do, and how they can coordinate. So despite the fact that we have all of these possibilities, all these potentialities are there, we still have the dominance of the institutions that we know. And they generate, they, they, they destroy any concept of citizenship in a progressive way. It becomes a neoliberal type of citizenship. The logic of the consumer rather than the logic of a citizen with a, with a welfare state that's being destroyed. And they also reproduce a very, very uh, problematic, nationalistic, um, often racist type of citizenship of exclusion. So it through schooling, through the mainstream media and through the way in which the operation of the key, the mainstream institutions of society are taking place. So there's need for coordination. It's essential that all these things somehow find the ways of coordinating together. You know, the kind of a new international at, the, at this level. Yes, the kind of understanding that this would take place. So it's important that there is coordination. So we need to also examine, and this is the agenda for people involved and the commons or the responsibility of, of, of us as researchers, 
is to try and look at the evidence that is in abundance around us and find out how, in what ways, and in what direction, and to what extent we can make a difference. And artists can play an, 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 a vital role in this process. In, in this day and age, as we have seen many various examples before us, and I think in Cyprus has, has similar types of examples, but uh, Yannis would say that there are no, there are no radical arts in Cyprus. Um, uh, so, uh, he's, in, in, I don't know, maybe he's really being a little bit provocative here in terms of provoking artists to take more of a responsibility, but I think there is an issue here about the way in which art goes in the other direction. It doesn't go in the direction that, of Castoriadis here. It goes more in the direction of art which has been uh, influenced by ne the neoliberal reality. They have gone their individualist way, and I think there is an issue there to be taken up. But in any case, I think that we need to study, we need to understand and demonstrate and discuss through different media, uh, different ways. I'm also a radio producer, I have a radio program, where, uh, so I can, I'm also involved in trying to open up spaces using the radio. Artists have their domain to do similar things. We all, there is all a, a coordination to see the kind of spaces that are opened up in front of us, in the potentialities that exist, and also in, our, in raising a common uh, efforts to address the obstacles that are stopping us. These obstacles are very, very serious and they're being reproduced in society. One of the worrying factors of the study that uh, I mentioned, the University of Cyprus studies on, on the Facebook, uh, Harris Saltis, who notes that there is uh, the good thing about the, 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 co the, the combination, about the, 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 tr the, the changes that have taken place over the past 15 years, is that the Hellenocentric and the Turcocentric uh, people, those who have Greece at their center and Turkey as their center, is contracted. And the, and, and, the, and the good thing is that the other spaces are expanding. The worrying thing is that we have a, a more of a, a communal, not in the way we understand community here, not in a progressive way, but a very, very, very negative way, in the sense that community is my own ethnic community. And I think that's a serious thing. And my final point is that we have to look at the various actors, the assemblages, the media, uh, the human aspects and agencies, as well as their roles and their subjectivities, and enhance them by creating more spaces. And I think gathering like this is a very useful uh, way of going forward. Thank you very much.